To understand stress means acknowledging that the feminine, the inner self, has been completely denied by our culture, particularly over the last 6,000 years when we um, were experiencing the lessons of patriarchy. In other words, what would our lives look like if we completely honoured the masculine but denied the feminine? The feminine is the inner self. It's um, the soul spirit part of us whereas the masculine is the persona the part of us that can do things out in the world and we need both we need both equally to be honored if we are to be well um, if we are to flourish as a civilization so how do we create a culture that honors the feminine that honors the inner self so that we don't keep creating this epidemic called stress well, for a start, we need to look at how we structure our time because time is a man-made construct. And if we are working by the clock, if we are implementing false time, such as daylight saving, it actually separates us from the natural cycles. The more we understand the natural cycles and the effect that the, the lunar cycle has on us, so what we're like at new moon compared to full moon and the half uh, quarters in between, or understanding the solar wheel, understanding the effect that that has on our libido, on our partnerships, um, on our emotional well-being. The more that we can dance and live in attunement with an awareness of the effect that the natural cycles have upon us, the less we will create this inner hysteria. So too, we tend to live more in separation rather than communally. Separation, um, the individuation of the ego, you know, look mum, see what I can do. Um, this is very much the masculine. Um, so because we're in a culture that has explored the masculine for 6,000 years, we are living in more isolation and more separation than ever before. Now that means that we don't have the support that we would have in a culture that lived more communally. So you see in um, a lot of Eastern cultures they have extended family living, um, you know, within a compound or uh, within a, a gettable community. So too, you know, the earlier uh, earth-based indigenous cultures, they tended to live in tribes or in uh, interdependent huts with a central meeting place so that whatever you were going through, you always had somebody, another adult that you could talk to, um, a soul brother, a soul sister, an elder, so that you weren't uh, left to stew in your stress um, which, if chronically left um, as a habitual way of dealing with your problems, then leads to substance abuse, which again is rife in the West, where we don't even acknowledge the emotional needs of the inner feminine. So too, um, we tend to live in cities. Um, a lot of people migrate when they come of age to the city in order to make something of themselves, to prove their worth. But what happens when we live in a city we um, don't have our natural self mirrored back to us. We don't have it evoked by the divine design of nature. Instead, we're surrounded by concrete, we're surrounded by um, ad slogans, billboards telling us what we should be doing rather than listening to our conscience, our inner self. When we live in nature, we are immediately um, soothed in our, in our nervous system because nature does not tell us what we should be. Nature just is. And that gives us permission to just be who we are. And when we are being, we are in the heart. And that is when we listen to our heart's inner guidance and we become our fullest potential according to our heart rather than the 10% rational brain, which, um, you know, its job is to try and keep us safe. So it's constantly focusing on what could go wrong, you know, Murphy's Law, and this creates, again, that sense of hysteria. So um, the other big elephant in the room is money. Money is a man-made measurement of our worth. Money um, is not real. It is um, a deception. Our real worth is, is who we are. It's how we contribute to the global family. It's, um, you know, who we are inside expressed in service, in love. 
Um, the indigenous cultures, which were more feminine, um, they just instinctually shared, which is what the feminine does. It's why mothers teach their children to share. And then they go out into the world into a culture which does not share. So, you know, these um, lessons that are taught by the first spiritual teacher, which is the mother in the home, then are completely disregarded out in society. So, you know, we learn, well, that's not going to get me very far because I won't have any money. So, um, as a culture, if we want to um, de-stress, which is inevitable because we will wipe ourselves out if we uh, keep manifesting the disease in our body, which is caused by stress. It's caused by the hysteria of the inner feminine. And this is why so many women, when they, um, you know, hit menopause, known as moon pause in traditional cultures, literally have this inner hysteria removed as a hysterectomy because their feminine cannot take any more of this denial. So I invite each and every one of you to join with me in just through this awareness, it will start to change the choices that you make in your own life so that you are more honoring of your inner feminine, of your need to be as well as do. So um, reclaiming a lot of the traditions of the sacred feminine is another way to do this, such as red tents, and there's information on my website about that. Uh, the red tent movement is a huge global movement um, which is now also needed for the brothers. So um, I invite the men out there to gather together every new moon, which is when emotionally we tend to be more fragile and need support. And just by honouring the feminine in our own lives, we will eradicate stress in this new earth that we are co-creating together, which honours the feminine and the masculine equally.